I just came out here to feed the fish and I'm only seeing like two of them in here and I was also going to do some pruning on that cattail that's over there. It seems odd, the fish have been slowly becoming more and more active so I don't know where they went but I have a suspicion maybe this gigantic bullfrog might have something to do with the missing fish. It'll be hard to tell on camera. This is the biggest bullfrog I've ever seen in my backyard. It is huge. It seems to also have zero fear. Oh, I was trying to get a, it's gone now. Anyways, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm great. This is what it is. It's nature. That's why it's here. I don't plan on relocating the bullfrog, though there is a gigantic wetland just like maybe half a mile from here I could take it to. Been piddling, piddling around over here with the native and not native, the pollinator garden and noticing that it looks like most of the poppies, the majority of those seedlings look like they're fizzling out because it just it went from really cool and wonderful poppy weather to just pretty warm and toasty. That's not their thing. They don't really like that. I'll give them a light watering and hope that they Hang on, it would be nice to have some poppies over here. If not, it's all right, and try again next year. It's nothing new, this is what usually happens. It can be tricky in climates where your temperatures are up and down and up and down and up and down, where it can be 30 degrees one day and then 80 the next. They're not really fans of that mess. I don't have much planned this week other than just, I'd like to get this area tidied up and looking better, depending on what the forecast looks like in a couple of days. I may move a few plants out that will have to go back here because this is where the most shade is. You know, you gotta slowly acclimate them into the light. That intense spring sun can be a lot for them when they've been inside all winter. At some point, I'm expecting an order from Top Tropicals. We get to pop that open and see what those look like. I think the, that's supposed to get here today. So when that gets here, we can deal with that because I usually have to pop those plants up and it's a whole thing. You'll see when it gets here. That's probably, we'll wait for that to show up. It's in those boxes and then can maybe get some work done out here. There's plenty to be done, that's for sure. Well, that's an interesting place to leave a package. Pardon the wobbliness, starting off with the vlog camera. I'm going to have to go get my big one and maybe a dolly. I think I know one of two. Where's number two? Just have to wait to film the rest of this video. No idea what would be in this that's large enough to justify a box this big though. See what's inside box number one. Is this gonna be easy to open? Maybe? I don't know. Yeah, needed two hands for that. Look at this. Danger box. What's inside? Doesn't look like there's... I don't think the box needed to be quite this big, but maybe there wasn't an in-between size. This is a lot. A lot of staples. Very well-packaged plants. Shouldn't get ahead of myself though, need to actually see what they look like. But hey, I see flowers off to a good start. None of these are potted, are they? No, these are all bare root. Okay, I'm gonna get these potted up, wait for the second package to come and we can have a better look at what's going on here. Eight o'clock at night. That's really late for a delivery, but it's here. And it actually is on the front porch this time. It is late. I'm gonna pop this open, get to looking at what these plants are tomorrow. <laughs> My box opening approach is a little bit different this time. Not trying to keep it pretty, just trying to get it done. Let's see, number one. Number two, two, and three. Looking forward to opening these up. Okay, got a whole mess of plants over here, all from the same place. These are all those ones that were in the boxes from Top Tropicals, but he's gotta check them out, make sure he approves, even though they've been sitting there for a good day and a half. This is all mostly heliconius. There is one other plant that's not over here that I need to bring over. It's been roughly four days since those boxes came. These were, packaged up very well. I mean, you could see them when I took them out of the boxes. They wrapped in plastic. They have the stakes in them, which is something I always really, really appreciate. It. Those stakes can make a humongous difference in how well plants perform during shipping because they're not getting tossed up and down and smashed. Like, remember those bananas I got in the mail a few weeks ago? They didn't have stakes in them. They ended up not looking too hot a few days later and basically had to start those all over again and cut them back. Really nice, they had nice big root balls on them. The only problem was that the soil that the heliconias were 
mixed up in. It was just way too water retentive. Heliconias do appreciate a soil that's going to hold on to some moisture, but it needs to drain well to make it through winter when they get moved indoors. Since I grow them indoors during the winter time, it just seemed to make the most sense to go ahead and get them out of that more dense, hard soil and into something that was going to drain more freely. They had to sit for about two and a half days until I was able to get the soil off from underneath them, that hard, clumpy soil. I didn't want to remove it when it was sopping wet because that's a lot of weight on the roots and on the rhizomes and risks tearing it up more. So I just left them out and let them dry off for a bit and then got them potted up and here they are. I potted them up into a soil blend that was mostly coconut base, all, just a coconut base, all purpose potting mix. A good amount of charcoal, some orchid bark, some just like heavy wood chips, essentially, some uh, earthworm casting, some compost, and some uh, kelp meal that's back there. They're very heavy feeders, so making sure that soil's nice and rich is really important. And they may look kind of rough, at least particularly these two back here. These are Heliconia andromeda, Citricorum andromedas. They're uh, going through it, but remember, I pulled all the soil out from their roots, so they're probably going to look worse before they look better, and that's okay. The main thing is just to keep them someplace nice and warm so that they can reestablish those roots and get going again. They'll be okay, I'm not worried about it. Chances are these right here, this is a hirsuta, and then there's another Heliconia hirsuta over here. And it's probably, okay, I'll just put that down here. And it's probably gonna be the same case with this one. It's going to take it some time to recover from having its roots mess with. But within a few weeks, going to look great. I just plopped them in random pots. I didn't put them down too deep. I wanted to make sure there was enough of a lip that I could water them heavily. And I didn't want them to sit in anything that was going to hold on to the water for too long so they'd rot because it's not really all that hot here yet. I'm talking really fast because it's about to start raining. So there are the two hirsutas. Here's the flower on those hirsutas. Isn't that cool? This is one that's pretty much spent, but that's, you know, still you get the point. Really cool, really tropical flowers, or inflorescence is what that is. The andromedas, which just have the orange flower on them. Again, not much to see there yet. And then there's a Heliconia rostrata. It's going to be a while till I see a flower on this one. These have the really long pendulous. I'm sure I have it up here on the screen. Beautiful flowers, also called the lobster claw heliconia. And it's been quite nice here the last few days in the upper 70s and lower 80s. But as of right now, it's starting to drizzle and then it's going to drop into the 60s and then the 40s at night. So these are all going back inside. I'm not going to let these experience temperatures below 65 they can handle it but since they've they've been through enough they prefer warm temperatures and it's all about avoiding root rot i get those moved into the grow space here pretty soon but there's one other plant that i got from top tropicals this one isn't it pretty this is a variegated sea hibiscus they have really fun foliage to me they're reminiscent of a sea grape but variegated their leaves get really big they're supposed to be a really sturdy type of hibiscus to grow i'm not going to talk too much about the care because I haven't grown this one before. I've, well, I've had them outside, the regular type, not the variegated. But as far as overwintering them, that I don't know a ton about, but from what I've read, it's supposed to be pretty easy. This is a hibiscus that is grown more for its beautiful foliage. And look at that, look at that leaf. Isn't that cool? Every single leaf, you just, you don't know what you're going to get. So colorful and fun with these big tropical-y leaves. And these are just little leaves. They're gonna get a lot bigger than this. They'll have kind of a fun, wilds like you know plant that grows on a beach kind of appearance this is the plant i'm probably the most excited about there is a lot i have to say about it but maybe i'll save that for another time because i want to give this an opportunity to go ahead root itself in the potting the mix that this came in its root ball was totally fine it seemed like a great soil it was just those heliconias it was just it was kind of muddy probably great for how they grow them down there in florida i don't know but up here that just that wouldn't work they just rot and die the heliconias this is doing great so far this has been doing well i assume there's going to be some shipping stress that's just normal not a big deal i haven't taken off the stake yet we've been having that kind of weather that's really unpredictable so i just figure may as well leave it on there help give it support while it gets itself rooted in and reestablished into the pot. I cannot wait to see what this looks like in a few months. This is going to be a fun plant to watch grow because every time they pop out a new leaf, you just, you don't know what you're going to get. Is it going to be heavily variegated? Is it going to be kind of blah? It's just fun. The flowers on these are like little and yellow. I don't really grow this one for the flowers, not compared to like the Rosa Sinensis anyways. Those have much more impressive flowers. Uh, this one, all about those leaves. Look at those leaves. 
So pretty. And they are also heat lovers, so I will be moving that one back inside with the others, other heat lovers, like the, I think there's an Aphilandra back there, the Heliconias, some Alocasias and all that fun stuff. That rain is starting to move in. Gonna have to wait for that to pass. We can come back out. I'm really excited about rain though. Yeah, the rain's good, right Toby? Need it. Wash some of this pond there. I've been sneezing a lot. I don't remember what I was gonna say there. I got the hanging basket hung up and everything was fine and then I watered it and the weight of the basket actually started to bend this wrought iron hook. So I, I took it back down. This isn't gonna work, it's too big, it's too heavy, and uh, I'm going to have to figure something else out there. What I'll probably do is either just move it to a smaller basket, or I can take everything out and fill about the lower 50% of it with like plastic bottles, packing peanuts, just stuff I have lying around that's lightweight, and then the rest with soil, and that'll help lighten it up. I've done that before and it was totally fine because they're annuals, they don't really need a ton of space, but we're at the saturation line. Why am I trying to jam in all these words when it's raining? Toby, come on, let's go inside. Yeah, we gotta go inside, don't wanna ruin the camera. There we go. There we go. Watch out for the kitty. Get back out there as soon as it stops raining. <sighs> I left my seeds on the table. And I should have left the door open. Shoot. The seedlings are looking pretty good. Got somewhat roughed up just a little bit, but I had them outside for like probably a solid four days, morning and night. I didn't even bother bringing them in because it wasn't very cool out and they seem pretty good with that. And even have some that are like just now starting to come up and then there's some that failed. I don't know what happened. I don't know if a squirrel ripped them out or if I did that or just the weather. I don't know. And then there are a few that need to be thinned out and I think that some of the ones that need to be thinned out, like right here, there's three there and three in there, but nothing came up in the middle. If I get to that soon enough, I could pull one of those out and put them and there and could do the same thing with this one and this that's neither here nor there finally stopped raining i gotta go back to lowe's i know i was just there like, was just last week which was actually like 10 days ago but still I, I gotta go back pick that up when i get home that got blown over in the storm last night you gonna miss me pumpkin oh oh oh, oh okay i'm gonna say that was a big fat no i also thought it would be fun to get a look at all the spring flowers because it is really beautiful out there but there's all these little the little like the scab things the maple trees they start off where they drop what I they, they look like scabs I know it's gross but it's what it looks like and then they turn into the little whirly bird things and then those fall <laughs> and then after those fall there's like another set of scabby things that fall if I could do it again or ever period I didn't plant these trees I would go for one of the varieties that doesn't drop all the stuff, but I doubt those existed whenever these were planted. They're sugar maples. They're beautiful trees. I really like them, but whew, they are really messy. Hopefully I got the windshield clear enough that I can put y'all in here. Audio's gonna be funky because I'm further away. I don't wanna hold my phone while I'm driving. We can see some spring flowers. The reason I'm going back to Lowe's is because, remember if you watched last week's vlog, I went there, got excited, looked at plants, debated what to get. I just passed an FJ Cruiser. I haven't seen one of those in a, like, I feel like it's been at least five years. Anyways, whole point was that I forgot to get pool salt when I was there. And I talked about how you have to have the salt for the water to stay nice and clean. And uh, I really didn't have room in the car to get any salts anyways when I was there because I got a whole bunch of plants at the other nurseries I had been to. I think I got a few flats with, I did, I got a few flats with patients while I was at Lowe's. Wasn't quite enough space for everything, so I went ahead and I moved one of the seats out of the back of the car here. And I'm gonna try and pick up like a dozen bags. The pool salt's been sold out everywhere. I haven't really been able to find it, but I checked online this morning and it said that they had 235 bags. So hopefully that's true. Sometimes you get there and it's like, wait, where is this product? Like it's not actually there. But uh, what's nice is you can look and it'll tell you like the different bays and the aisles. So I just have to remember to do that. Sometimes I forget and I get frustrated and I'm like, you say you have it, but I can't find it. And then forget that I can pull it up on my phone while I'm there at the store and the answer would be right in front of me. So I'm gonna go get some pool salt, some gypsum and probably a few other things because I think next week it's gonna be time to do a lot of work with the soil and the garden beds. It's not really time to plant yet. It's still a bit early, at least to get the annuals in the ground. 
So uh, I need to get going on that. Which way do I, I'm gonna go this way. Yeah, just need to get this stuff, start working those garden beds. It's supposed to be really cool next week, like in the 60s with lows in the like basically 40 and upper 30s, which is a really great time to do uh, like I, the things I hate to do the most basically. So I like to get my mulching done, work the garden beds, uh, any heavy pruning or transplanting or big holes that need to be dug, that's a great time to do it because it's not sweltering hot outside. And it needs to be done right around now anyways. And I thought I'd bring y'all along even though we were just at Lowe's. I don't even know if I'll film while I'm there. But it's just so pretty out. And actually, I think that it peaked. This time last week, this road was just covered in white flowers and the trees are already flushing out to green, which is great. It's really early. There have been years in May where they're like still in flowers. The spring flowering trees this year have been on point. Unfortunately, it's mostly the Bradford pears, the big ones that are covered in tiny little white flowers that are doing the most right now. And they're invasive, like they're taking over in between the highways and they're just, they're naturalizing and it's not good. They're really a problem. They're taking over, but the people who do the landscapey stuff are saying, well, don't seem to care. They're just letting them grow in between the highways and they're taking over the little prairie areas. Pretty bad. They need to do something about it. I don't know if they're ever going to. They seem to just not care, but it doesn't help that there's still Bradford pears planted everywhere, like over to the right. All those trees, those are all Bradford pears. It looks amazing in springtime. They're so beautiful, but like I said, really terrible for the environment in this area. I don't think people are really planting them as often as they used to, which is good. They fall apart, like they're not long-lived trees for the most part. Storms always seem to rip them to pieces, so like they're everywhere. They're all over the left of the screen and on the right. Those are all Bradford pears. Oh, what's going on up here? Oh, don't step on the train tracks. What's wrong with you? Oh, and I need to do this fairly timely manner because you can see out to the west I think there's a fresh batch of storms that are going to roll in today which is good we need the rain so I'm for it it's good that's less watering I have to do right I'm sure all the other gardeners out there watching this have noticed plants respond so much better to rain than they do being watered by hand like in the spring and summer when we have a good amount of rain the plants look so much better no matter how well I water them. It's just, they like it so much better when it comes from the sky. It doesn't have all those chemicals in it. And then there's the changes with the air pressure and everything else that goes along with when it rains. And I'm sure that those influence something. I don't know what, but the, they probably do something. They influence the dew point, I think. I don't know, something sciencey. I'm just happy to be able to get out of the house, see some green. I got my second shot a couple days ago. Had to drive down to the southern part of the state like a two hour drive go get that shot come home that's why there wasn't a video on wednesday if anybody was wondering my i was just i was exhausted i don't know if it was because of the shot or if it was because i hadn't really had a day off up until wednesday which wouldn't have been a day off because i was gonna have a video come out and then i was like no it's been 15 days since i had just taken a break so i took the break i was tired and I uh, just wanted to rest. So I apologize about that. I know nobody really cares. It doesn't really matter, right? But if you were wondering, that's why no video Wednesday. The crab apples are looking pretty. Oh, they're so cute and pink. Little pink lollipops. Okay, this place is really crowded. I don't know if I'm going to film while I'm in there because we were just here last week. If there's anything that seems worthy of filming, then I will, I'll show you. But otherwise I'm just gonna grab some pool salt and gypsum and get out of here. I mean, you know, I'll probably leave with plants, but that's not the plan. It usually isn't, though. I don't know what kind of begonia it is. It just says Rex. It was very pretty. It's like electric green. It's just normal houseplant stuff going on here. They have some of the ficus trangulus. Is that what these are? Trangularia, sorry, and then some birkins. That's a little unusual. I had one of these before, and I honestly didn't really care for it. I had it for like three years and just I don't know. There's something about it that just, it wasn't working for me. Beautiful plant. It just got like kind of wild and unruly. This is a lot more shallow than the one I have at home. This might be a good option because remember the one I have is too big and it's weighing things down and falling, bending the hook. Did I just get a new bit? <sighs> There's just so much color. As far as I can see, it makes me so happy. My heart is smiling so much right now. 
I need to stay focused. Just here for salt and gypsum and maybe a few other things. We will see. There, there are a lot of things. I think that'll do it. I was going to get some compost stuff while I'm here, but 15 bags at 40 pounds each. That's 600 pounds going to the back of the car and yeah, no, she's a teenager. I don't know if she's gonna appreciate this. We will see, it should be okay, but I don't wanna push it. I would really like to get some lobelia, but I just know as soon as it gets really hot outside and wet, they're just gonna die. So I'm not gonna waste the money. They have varieties, they're a little bit more heat tolerant, but this just says lobelia. So I have no idea. They're so pretty though. Yeah, that should do, there's plenty of room. I could have gotten more. That's better, That's that seems more appropriate. You hear that? That's the hydraulics, the car's leveling itself out. I always forget that it does that and then it, I think something's wrong with the car, it starts making weird noises. But there we go, that stopped. Safe to go now. I mean, come on, how? How is this so pretty? I'm thinking beautiful, these little crab apples, I don't know if they're crab apples or cherries, pretty sure they're crab apples. Yeah, crab apples, you can't see from here, but they're they're everywhere in full bloom right now. I figured, since there's so much room left in the car, like I'm just gonna pop it and have a look. It's right next door to Lowe's. It makes it so hard to avoid the temptation. And also I thought it'd be fun to just hear and feel beautiful underneath all these beautiful flowers. People looking at me, I don't care. It's so pretty. Look at it. It's so freaking pretty. I was kidding, I really don't need to get anything, just wanted to browse and see what was going on. I'm like, okay, I needed a few more impatience. And then they have these really nice succulents too. They have great succulents here right now. And look at all the different delosperms. They haven't opened, but they're pretty. And you can tell from even seeing the flowers when they're closed up and lots of Semper Vivums. There's some fun tricolor sedums up here, which I don't need because I have a big pot of these I need to plant up at home but I still feel inclined to buy it. I don't know why. I'm not going to, because I know that I have a great big thing of them at home, but I really want it. Lots of succulent dishes with some various aloes, echeverias, calenco, calencho, whatever you want to say, calencoe, whole bunch of those. And I got little mini succulent baskets that have some various sedums and some little ripsalis in them with aeoniums in the middle. These are really pretty. They did a good job blending those colors up. They pop really nicely. I mean, I should probably get one of these, right? Only $12.98. I had a hard time finding a string of pearls last year. And all the ones I had didn't fare all that well to the watering from the people who were helping me out with the plants last summer, which is okay. That was to be expected. These can be finicky plants sometimes. Oh, well, it's got a tiny little flower on it. Woohoo, look at those dahlias. Yes, something else found its way into the cart. Don't worry about it. It's fine. These are pretty awesome. I would be tempted. Look how big the flowers are on those. Nice big dahlias for this time of year. They forced them and did a good job. I have a lot of dahlias coming in the mail, so as tempting as these are because they're in bloom now, so I'm not going to have to wait until, like, July and... August to see flowers. I don't think that I really do want one though. I mean, look at them, they're so pretty, but they're still wrapped up. Starting to rain, and they've been wrapped up the whole time I've been here. They don't seem to be in a rush to unpack them, so if they were unwrapped, I'd probably get one. Or if they were small enough to sneakily squeeze through the plastic, I'd get them. I've done that before, but eh, I guess it's just not meant to be. I might wait. Should I wait? I think I'm gonna wait. These are so pretty. I got some beautiful purple stock. Was happy to see that. Then got a few other things. You know, you saw those things and the string of pearls. Another flight of impatience. Look at those when we get home. And then just the most beautiful passenger seat ever to be seen. It's gonna be a fun drive home. <laughs> it's so pretty in here. Right, well, that was an unintended surprise, a welcome surprise. I'm good with it. I mean, come on. I've been trying to take a selfie, but I can't find an angle that I'm okay with. It's not gonna happen. You can do it later. So much color.
think the gorilla cart met its match. That's not good. I thought this thing was supposed to be able to haul like 800 or even more than that. I thought it was something ridiculous, but oh, apparently not. A little winded. I'm gonna do this stuff and then hopefully it'll stop raining and I can get the good camera out and we can have a closer look at all the new plants. It's still pretty misty right now. So remember last week when I was showing off the new orchid and I was like, I don't know how to describe the smell. I couldn't put my finger on it. Well, my sister was here for Easter over the weekend. She sniffed it and immediately went, oh, gardenia, duh. It smells very jasmine-y or gardenia-ish. Just a random update nobody asked for. You're welcome. This one's still blooming and smelling really nice too. I want to go outside and show the plants. You pretty much saw everything I got. There were a few things that I got last week that I didn't show. And I thought just a little walk around because there's so much happening outside. You know, typically the garden tours are at the end of the month, but by the time the end of April gets here, it's just so much will have passed and changed already. And I thought that might be kind of fun since it's spring and so much is going on to be able to have a look just like briefly at the end of each video to see what's changed. You know, with plants, a week can pass and so much can change just with that one passing week. Right, Toby? So much enthusiasm from Toby. Also, I'm trying, is this in focus? I'm trying a new audio situation since I figured with the bulk of this video having been filmed on my phone because I was out in public or in the rain that the audio is probably horrible as it is. So why not let this be the video where I experiment with new audio things? Did it start raining again? <sighs> I just have to try again later. Not getting the camera wet. That's better. It is. A Gorgeous day. Kind of cool and crisp, but it's like just right. And I'm loving it. Got plenty of rain over the last few days. Everything's looking good out here. These dahlias. Oh, I love them so much. So these didn't have a label. They just said like summer combo on them. So I don't know what kind of dahlia they are, but I'm glad I got them. Really glad that I got these. I actually saw these a couple weeks ago at a different Home Depot and passed them up and I just I've been thinking about them ever since so it was just it felt like fate <laughs> which is that's my justification the one I got there they just happened to be unpacking a fresh rack of plants that had these on them I think one of the reasons that I wanted these so badly is that the dahlias you know you plant them you get those tubers into the ground and then you wait until like now, usually for me, it's right around August to start to start seeing flowers on them. And that's a long time to wait. Now, I have a lot of dahlias that are going to be going into the ground this year and some into pots. So this was potentially unnecessary. But all of those, like, I think 23 dahlias coming, about nine different varieties, something like that. All dinner plates. Dinner plates and cactus, actually. Not all dinner plates. Anyways. Those aren't going to be in bloom until mid to late summer. Whereas these, they're already, they're greenhouse forced. So they're already going, doing their thing. And what's not to love about that? They'll keep doing their thing as long as make sure to remove those spent flowers. Can't let them even get close to going to seed. And they'll just keep on flowering. I'm not going to repot them just yet. I just have them like sitting in other pots for right now. Like that one's back there in a deck planter, a deck box. And this one's here in this. I think 16 inch, 14 inch ceramic pot. I don't know if that doesn't really matter. Point being, I'm gonna let them rest for a while because I know that they just arrived, right? I just saw them get pulled off that truck yesterday. So I know that they've been through it and now they're here, you know, they had their car right here and changes from being in a greenhouse or wherever they were far down south, however they forced these and got them going so early. It just seemed like a good idea to maybe wait a couple weeks let these adjust and not do anything that's going to cause them any more stress, right? Especially because the temperatures, looking at my extended forecast, are trending much cooler over the next like seven to 10 days. It's still gonna be fine outside for these plants. I think the coolest temperature is 40 degrees, but it's gonna be like highs in the 60s, low in the 40s, and that's not great for repotting plants that tend to like things more warm, right? Yeah, that's my line of thinking there. So I'm gonna leave them alone, let them adjust and just enjoy them. I wish there was a variety name on them, but that's okay. One of the things that I do really like about whatever type this is, is that there's a lot of variation on the plants. You can see as they open up to a larger flower, like this one's about done, ready to go. There's a lot more of the white exposed, the petals are 
further apart. And then within that mix, there's also lots of flowers that are a lot smaller and have more of that classic heavy petaled kind of peony look to them. And that could just be from changes in temperatures or light or all of those things, or it could be a characteristic of the plant. I can't really say for sure. It's just, I think the most notable characteristic other than that they're just colorful and pretty is that there's a lot of variation with those flowers. They're really fun. I love dahlias, fun, happy, cherry plants. They might need a cutback at some point just because uh, they are already started so early. So like I said, we have to stay on top of that deadheading to keep everything nice and fresh. But also, since they're already going like this, there might be a point where they get a little bit scraggly and um, I'll decide what to do with them at that point. But that's probably months down the road if it is even an issue. I kind of doubt that it will be. So there's those, all the dahlias. Very happy about them. That was a pleasant surprise to see those at the nursery. Cause like I said, I was kicking myself for not picking them up when I was there a few weeks ago. Got a great big fern, Kimberly queen fern. I have this because I have a spot that I wanted something big and lush, kind of an instant gratification thing. This isn't where it's going to stay. This is, I have a big croton in the growth space and that typically goes here. The croton's getting kind of big for the spot, but I'm gonna try and dig the hole out further so the crotons doesn't encroach on the doorway. Anyways, it's a nice big fern. Really big, fun fern. Kimberly queen ferns are great, really sturdy. They're pretty weedy down south, but up here they make decent houseplants and they can take a good amount of sun. So that's one of the reasons I like these because it's gonna go in a spot where the sun is, it's not gonna be super intense, but it's gonna be pretty bright during the morning, not very filtered. And then it's going to be, did I say berry? It's not gonna be very filtered. <laughs> during the morning but it'll be shaded somewhat in the afternoon for a little while so i think it's going to do well where it's going to end up going i got that basket i'm going to do this repot you i'm not going to make you guys watch it you don't need to see me do the same basket three times i don't think that that seems fair to anybody i will be lining it with plastic with holes in the bottom just help with moisture retention and i'm going to put a layer of packing peanuts in the bottom because i always hold on to packing peanuts when they show up in the mail that, that way I don't have to worry about them blowing around if the recycling company, they don't, don't always take them. So it just makes sense to utilize them and keep them from ending up in landfills if the recycling places won't take them. So just a little bit that's going to lighten the weight of everything that's in there. I also have a whole bunch of petunias here. These are all of the sky varieties. This one down here is pink sky. Has really pretty, I mean, look at, you can see it. Gorgeous. Beautiful pink flowers with lots of white speckles. And this one right here is purple sky. Yeah, electric purple sky. So it's more of a, like an in-between of the regular night sky, which is this one right here that has a deep purple flower on it. You see those pretty purple flowers with lots of tiny little white spots. And then this is that in-between of the brighter pink, the darker purple, and then this one. I actually got these for something I'm doing for someone else. I'm not gonna be keeping these. I haven't always had the best luck with the Sky series of petunias. They tend to rot when it gets really warm here and we have heavy rainfall. They just tend to fizzle away and don't always do the best. If I were to try them again, I'd probably put them in a mix that drains way faster than something I would normally use for a petunia. But the problem is petunias are heavy feeders as it is. So I'd have to just feed them nonstop. It's just a shame because they're so pretty but just every time I try them, they only look nice for like maybe a month and a half, two months. And then, like I said, it's just, it ends up being over for them. And I also have some hearts, tongue ferns here. Aren't they pretty? Get up on the tags, you know what I'm talking about. Sorry everything's so washed out. The sun is kind of harsh right now. I'm gonna to need to move these back into the shade right away too. I just pulled these out so we can see them. Excellent plants, hardy zones, four through nine. This is the uh, the, uh, the UK, ver there's a variety that's hardy here uh, in the U, or not hardy, native here in the US, but they are, I think they're endangered. You don't see them very often. They're the Americana type of heart's tongue fern. So these are the UK British variety, the ones that grow over there. One of my favorite ferns, these I've actually always had a really hard time trying to get a hold of these. I don't see them for sale very often, which is a shame because they grow really well in my area as long as they get situated in a spot that's like fairly shady with a nice loose soil that stays fairly moist. So I guess what I just said is they grow fairly well as long as you give them the perfect conditions. They're fun and they're pretty. I have some planters that are going into the shade that I wanted these as a understory plant in the pots. They have that nice glossy foliage. 
fairly tropical looking. They're in a splenium, so so right there in the tag. That's a, you know, the bird's nest fern. So they're in the same family. They're related, and you can even kind of see it. Like that foliage, but these are, they're not going to be as tolerant of dry conditions as a typical bird's nest fern would be. Okay, I went ahead and let the sun move out a little bit. It's still, you know, things are still pretty washed out, but I just didn't think that the picture was coming through all that well. So here's a little recap of things. Hopefully not as washed out. I won't know until I'm editing, but that looked like things were pretty intense there. So there are a few plants left. There are a lot of plants. This is a combination of a couple of weeks of things right here. I got some creeping thyme. I actually got three of these, but I only figured I should bring one of them over. Creeping thyme, one of my favorite trailers. They have such nice, delicate, dainty foliage, and you can eat it, do a lot of stuff with it. So that's a fun plant to have around. And then I'm gonna make this the last one. <laughs> there's, there's more, but it's, there's enough plant haul stuff going on. You can pick up on the rest of it next week. This is a squill, leopard or silver really fun awesome plants i might have a video on these i'm not sure they're a plant i could talk about these for a long time there's a lot to say great house plants they're simple easy to grow and they have just some of the most amazing foliage if you're an orchid person then you may look at that and i don't know i look at it and think that it looks similar to a phalaenopsis shoriana kind of sort of i mean it's silver and green so that's basically where that comes from and in person it's probably not going to show on camera but the leaves have like a sparkly nature to them sort of like on the african violets you know how their flowers sparkle similar to these i had one of these for years like a long time these will live a really long time these are super easy to grow but it didn't make it through the 2020 stuff that was going on so grabbed a new one i will probably be repotting this just because it looks well, for one, like it's slightly over potted and this soil might be too moisture retentive. I think it would be fine for while it's outside during the summertime, that's nice and warm, but inside in the winter, I don't know. I think that that would drown it. I don't think that's probably the best mix to keep it in. For right now, it's fine though. And it has a flower on it, but it's basically died off. So not much to see there with that flower. Oh, and I forgot to mention when I was showing the variegated sea hibiscus here, these are uh, 10A and up, so they don't like any cold. Might be able to pull it off in 9B, but I believe they're listed as being potentially invasive. So if it's something you're interested in, it'd be a good idea to check and uh, see what the rules and restrictions are or if there even are any. But just to know that if you plant it in one of those zones, it could be something that kind of takes over. So it's just one of those plant responsibly kind of messages there. So bad if I had left that out and forgotten to mention it. Oh, and there's, I picked up one more flat of impatience because actually I still need two more. There are gonna be a lot of impatience planted this year, but I got another one. So I'm trying to get that color assortment going over here. And then I grabbed this beautiful Pieris here. One of my favorite evergreen shrubs. I actually prefer the one that's not variegated, but well, you'll see, I'm gonna be doing a uh, bonsai with this at some point, and I just, it already had such great structure to it. I was like, this is just, it's perfect. It's one that I'm not even going to have to do very much with, but the whole process is gonna be potentially complicated if I decide to do it the way that I should. But I may not do that, I might just do it the fun way. Which, like I said, we'll talk about that another time. I know in the beginning of the video I'd mentioned that I was gonna be doing a lot over here. I, I, I didn't. Clearly, you're here. I actually spent the bulk of my time working from right about here all the way around to uh, right about where that the pool equipment is over there. So I got this half of the patio taken care of. Everything's all cleaned up for the most part. There's still a pile of twigs here that I need to handle, but that's it. Got all the pottery cleaned up, anything that just looked like it wasn't gonna come back because of the weather in February. That's all gone and taken care of. I had a lot of little things like primulas and the, some various ferns out here that were in this area that just, that cold snap just did them in. So I went ahead and got all that cleaned up there. I mean, there's still some cleaning to do over here. I was trying to get the space more tidy. All this is, we'll talk about that another time. There's gonna be a lot of stuff going on over here. Next week, hopefully, well, I don't know, it's supposed to be getting cooler. Hopefully the next few weeks I'm gonna be redoing this berm and that's gonna be fun. I'm really looking forward to getting that done. I also had perennials going all the way around this curve here that just didn't look like they were gonna make it. I 
had, there are some that did okay, and I had them set up nice and tidy there, and then the wind knocked them over, so I need to fix that up. I need to do some transplanting. The honeysuckles are probably going to go on this gate and then on the other side, but I'm waiting to see uh, action from the canna lilies and some things that were planted here last year, because I don't want to accidentally dig into them. So hopefully in the next couple weeks, those will do something, unless they're dead. And then I'll just, I won't worry about it. More growth coming out of the bananas, have some more shoots coming up down there. Next week, I would say it's definitely going to be time to start pulling these mulch piles and redistributing them. These will go on the backside of that berm where all the skip whorls are. I want to get that done before it actually gets hot out. And we've had plenty of heat. It, probably two or three weeks, it's actually going to be like really warm and toasty. And I don't want to rot everything out, right? Got to get that mulch pulled out and then start working the bed with all the gypsum and compost and alfalfa pellets and all that fun stuff. Can you tell which side of this area is warmer than the other? I got the crepe myrtle over here like all flushed out and starting to do its thing and then the one that's planted right across from it that has drip line wrapped into it for some reason i don't know why nothing hopefully it's not dead that would really stink because i wanted some symmetry there but who knows but that's a good sign i hopefully that means that the gingers that are planted around here over in this area are going to come back still too soon to tell though and then another sigh of relief Got bananas coming up from this berm over here. The pool people, that I, that's not where those are supposed to go. I need to clean that up. But that's a really big relief because this clump was way behind. The other one started going about a week and a half ago. And that just popped up yesterday. And I was concerned that this was just going to be death in here. But nope, doing something, finally. Ferns are starting to break dormancy. A lot of ferns, ostrich ferns, got transplanted last year. So I wasn't positive how they were going to do. Because they also got transplanted in like just the hottest part of summer. But... That one's coming up and there are several others that are starting to move too. I have a teeny tiny little bit of action going on in here with some of those frog in a blender coidiums that got potted up also. These are either frog in a blender or white Christmas. I'm not positive. Hopefully they're the frog in a blender ones. If not, it's okay. I have a whole bunch more of them. Those are going to have to go inside here probably tomorrow. Today's nice and warm, but that 40 degree temperatures at night, that's not gonna be good for those. And then the same with all the heliconias that I showed with all the stuff that I got from Top Tropicals. This one right here, the Ristrata, I need to drill some new holes and I came out here yesterday and it was just completely full of water so I leaned it on its side to let that water drain out and I'm gonna get some holes, more holes, drilled into through the bottom of it and potted back up. They're pretty sturdy as far as heliconias go so I'm not really concerned about it. Same thing with these hirsutas. That's These are the hirsutas. Hard to see because the lighting is harsh. They tend to be pretty forgiving Helo as far as heliconias are concerned. They tend to be pretty forgiving. It's the other, the Cytericorum, the Andromedas. They can be kind of finicky and whiny. So those are definitely going, well, they're all going in. I have to take them all in, but I'm gonna make sure that those get the most warmth. Those are going in the warmest spot of the garage because they will definitely need it. I think that that's everything. I probably should have vlogged while I was doing all the cleanup and everything, but it was just, it was like really misty all week. And I just, I don't know. Sometimes it's just faster to just do it. And I was just picking stuff up and moving things to either the compost yard waste bins or into the recycling bins and you know, I don't know. This doesn't seem that exciting, but I will try and remember if I ever do that again to do a before and after. But it wouldn't have been that significant, so it doesn't matter. Excited about getting some color out here. Plants are doing their things, lots of stuff going on with the spring bulbs as well. In a few weeks, just like maybe two, three weeks, going to start to move the tropicals out. I do need to wait until there's some more shade. The trees are still flushing out, so it's pretty harsh lighting, and even though, you know, a lot of those plants can take full sun, they haven't been in full sun when they've been there in that growth space. It would just shock them to bring them out here. It's going to have to be patient just for a couple more weeks. Almost there, and that's fine, because I'm going to use that time to work those garden beds, get everything else cleaned up and tidied, which is a big task. A lot of stuff fell through the cracks last year, so there's a lot of stuff to fix up out here. There's more than enough to do over the next couple weeks. It's just... It's not as pretty. This is going to look a lot better hopefully in the next week because I need to remove this mulch pile also because you can see those ferns are, maybe you can see, they're starting to come up in here. Is that on camera? Yeah, you can see it hopefully. And there's also a big clump of gingers under here so I do need to pull that back and then get these Chinese fan palms cut back and there's still some pottery left that's sitting in here from when I had to wait all those frost cloths down when it was super cold outside. It's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it because I just, I, it's, it's so messy. It's gotten a lot better than it was even just a week ago, especially a few months ago, but I would like to get things smoothed out and tidied and more buttoned up. Just about there. 
getting close. Um, there's a little bit of tulip and highest infection going on over here. Not a ton. The double eight tulips, they're supposed to get 20 inches tall. 18 to 20, I believe. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that I don't think they're going to get that high. Maybe it's because it's so warm. You know, they didn't get as much of a cool, I don't know what kind of cool rest they got because I ordered these pre-chilled. So oh, it doesn't matter. They're gonna be pretty, but that's, that's a far cry from 20 inches. That's pretty small. It doesn't matter though. They're gonna be pretty no matter what. Oh, and look at this. Oh, you can't even see that. I'm gonna try and cast a shadow so that you can actually that, that leaf. Isn't that beautiful? With this, I don't wanna talk about it too much. Like I said, I'm gonna do something a little bit more specific about this plant, but I just love it. Every leaf, you get something totally different, which is how things go with variegated plants, but I just love that they have the white and green then you have that more coppery color, and then there's some that are just pink. I don't know how well that's going to show on camera, but it's very pink. It's fun having plants that start off one color and fade to another. It just gives a little bit of extra variety. I said I was gonna go, didn't I? Pretty sure I did. Thanks for hanging out while just all the stuff happened for who knows how long. Comment down below, say hi, I love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? You're getting closer. I'm, a lot of you are already there. Getting stuff done in your garden, seeing you on Instagram. Your gardens are looking beautiful. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.